I've come down to the workshop to pick up these. Those are around 50 hang keys. That's the pocket clip made from titanium that you attach your keys to and hangs on your pocket or your bag or whatever. Stops you making a hole in your pocket with your keys or scratching your phone. It's, in fact, if I grab my keys, they've gone. Doesn't stop you from losing your keys though. There's my keys. So that's it here, I have a gold one. I've run out of them, I've got 50 left. Luckily, luckily, last week we cut a few hundred of them and so they are going to be machined this week and I'll be ready to go again. I won't, I'll hopefully not run out of stock. Now I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, hey Magnus, it's been a long time since you've shown us a new product or a new prototype. Well, this is your lucky day. So this here is not a new product nor a new prototype. In fact, it's one of my first products. I think this was the third product I ever made. I think possibly fourth. But there's a reason I am showing you this. When I first met up with my CNC machinist just over two years ago, I really didn't know anything about CNC machining. In fact, I really, I really didn't know anything. I won't even pretend to fake that. Nothing. I knew what the machine was and I knew what it could do, but that was it. I didn't know about end mills and tool paths and all the other stuff that... Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. So this is a pry bar. You use it to lever things open, you know, cans of paint, just a whole load of uses. A pry bar isn't something I use very often, if at all, but I certainly have lots of customers who it, it's their thing, so... I'm not going to disappoint people. Now this is one of the first products I had CNC machine. Prior to that, I was hand grinding around the edges and so I could only sort of do work in, in 2D, you know, flat pocket tools. So you take a look at this, you can see there's sort of angles and, and things like that on it. Stuff that can only be done with a CNC machine. So here's the reason I'm showing you this. This hole here at the back is where you put, you know, you attach it to your keychain or onto like a, a lanyard, you know, paracord or whatever. But this hole here, has only one purpose, and it is for screwing down onto the CNC fixture so that this pry bar can be machined from a blank bit of titanium. It's got no aesthetic reason for being there, there's no functional reason. And so it's something like I was unhappy with as my products got better and better over the last year or two, and it just bothered me. To, you know, like, I'm always improving, and my products now are better than they were six months ago, and six months ago they were better than they were the six months before that, and I'm just trying to push and push and get them better and better. So what I've done is I've redesigned this pry bar to remove this hole, because it was purely for fixturing. Now, I thought a product had to be fixtured like that, like one there, one there, and that's how you did it you know, two years ago when I really didn't know anything about CNC machining. And so I was just like, oh, well, if a hole needs to go there, it needs to go there. And it's a cheaper way of producing it. But I've come to learn over the last year or two, talking with my machinist and, and watching other people and learning, that you can do anything you want. It just means there, there's more operations. Like, you can't just clamp it once and machine it. You might have to clamp it once, machine part of it, move it around, clamp it again, machine another part to avoid having this hole in there. This is probably the last product that was really bothering me in my, in my range of products that I knew this didn't need to be there. It was from two years ago. I just wanted to make sure I sold out of the inventory and then I stopped selling it. I stopped dead. I removed it from the website and I wasn't going to sell it again until I got rid of this hole. And that is what I'm going to show you today. gone. Can't find it. Oh. Right, so there has been three changes to this one. Now this hasn't been tumbled. Actually, just out of interest, this one I'm showing you here is a reject. You probably saw loads of marks on it and things like that. That is a reject. I picked it from the reject box. This one here, the new one, it has not been tumbled. It's purely raw, so bear that in mind when you're looking at it. It's not the final product. Four changes on it, not three, four. So here's what I've done. 
If you take a look at this, this is the old one and the new one. I need some sort of pointy thing to show you. Pointy thing. Yeah. Right, so the first improvement, this hole here on the new one is a little bit larger than the old hole. We found that was necessary for, you know, people putting paracord through and, you know, putting on their keychain. Not only that, but hopefully this comes through for you. There's a bevel, there's a slight bevel around the hole. Here it's just, it's just plain, it's just a hole drilled through, nothing else. So, so that's a sort of an aesthetic improvement. The third thing is that I've also beveled the other side. So even, even the underside now has a bevel compared to the, the previous one. So that, there's another, another little detail I've improved on. Now the fourth thing, and it's the most major change, is the removal of this hole here. Now before I show it to you, you won't think that just removing the hole will make much of a difference, but as you'll see, it, to my mind, it looks like a completely different product. It's not like even like the same product. It changes it so much, it's unreal. So take a look at this. What a difference, like it doesn't even compare. Now that I see this one, I'm like, how did I ever sell that one? Just, just completely different, look at the lines. In fact, there's probably a fifth improvement. I actually changed the angle of these lines and you know, it's got an extremely sleek, yeah. There's probably not much more I can say about it. It really, it really is a massive improvement to my mind and if it's a big improvement to my mind, that's good enough, that's my criteria. <laughs> Just out of interest, that pry bar, I actually call it the Primal, which I thought was a kind of a cool name. That will most likely be launched as a Kickstarter project. I will probably try and launch it next week if I you know, can get the time to put the project together because I currently have no projects running on Kickstarter. The previous project for the titanium tweezers, they are mostly shipped, 80, 90% shipped now. Yeah, 80% shipped. The other project for the large titanium pill pods, the, the things that screw together. That project is over and I'm basically ordering the titanium now and starting to fulfill that. So probably time for another project really. Let's talk very briefly about the jet powered skateboard. I had a couple of very good comments. I can't remember who commented or which video they commented on, but they gave a couple of excellent suggestions for the placement of the electronics and how to do the, the thing that keeps the fuel, the fuel tank. The first was a, a link someone posted and they posted like an aluminium box that had been made up and strapped to the bottom of a skateboard. I think it was to hold batteries on that particular board, but it could be used for a fuel tank. So it was kind of like a welded aluminium tank and I thought that was pretty clever. So that's a possible option. The other idea, and I had genuinely not considered it, even though it seems simple, it's like, oh, maybe it takes someone like to just cut through the noise and the clutter to like point out the simplicity of it. So whoever that was, thank you. And that was to put the electronics here under the board. Like, why not put the electronics underneath there? This, stop spinning. Why not put the electronics underneath there? So the fuel tank can go under here. In fact, here's my example fuel tank. So the fuel, so the fuel tank could go here and here I could mount the electronics. I think that's a good idea because then when I put the jet engine up at the back here, there won't be a bunch of electronics all sort of making it look messy and stuff like that. It'll just look very clean. Just the jet engine, two power cables coming out from it and the fuel pipe coming out from underneath and it'll look really clean and neat and pretty awesome I think. So that's what I'm thinking about just now. Not gotten hugely far along with it but just trying to figure out kind of the practicality of it as well as the sort of functionality and yeah. Now this is the GSU which stands for ground station unit. Basically it's the touch screen for setting up the jet engine and you know changing settings, connecting the radio, things like that. In previous videos I've talked about how there was no documentation for this new thing like now I got upgraded to this new fancy touchscreen one 
free of charge which was a bonus but the downside is that there was no manual or anything like that however I have just been sent a manual from the guy I bought it from so I've not looked at it yet but that's very exciting I think that's all I have to do here today <laughs> Right, I was just out in the garden, and you won't believe what I found. I'm going to show you something. You know what this is? This was my first ever tumbler. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Magnus, that's just a dirty old plastic tub. It is a dirty old plastic tub, but it was also a tumbler for about 10 minutes. I'd heard about tumbling, I watched some YouTube videos, I knew that you could get a machine that you put uh, tumbling media in and you put you know your metal object in there and it turns and I didn't have money for a tub, I, I just wanted to prove the concept. So I had a bit of titanium cut locally, I think I had like a card type multi-tool design. I went to a local kitchen store, bought this plastic tub, opened it up and I grabbed a whole bunch of rocks like this from the garden, just down there, put them in the tub, not on the tub, in the tub, I filled the tub about halfway up, I put the bit of titanium in, I screwed the lid on, I then taped the lid on with clear plastic tape, sellotape or something, I then wrapped it really really tightly in a towel and then I tied that towel up with loads and loads and loads of string, I just went overboard with the string and I threw that bundle into the washing machine. Set it spinning and it was thumping around. It was do 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 and yeah I, I sort of stood and watched it and I thought oh that's kind of working, kind of tumbling and then I just kind of left it and just you know left it for I think I went about five or ten minutes and then like I forgot how washing machines work like they start off slow and then they get faster and faster and I think it went on some sort of crazy fast spin cycle and from hearing that thud 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 I suddenly heard like a clattering and clanging of stones just I was just like oh shit so I threw down what I was doing went through opened it up and sure enough like the towel had come undone the other string had come undone the lid had come off there was there was stones flying around the washing machine but I got the bit of titanium I looked at it and I could see it was starting to round it was starting to to get a stone washed look and that was the beginning of Cogent Industries. True story actually. And you know it's funny, from that sort of interesting, very amateurish but functional and effective beginning, you know it's now three years later I think, almost three years later, and I'm making things like these, ultra high end sort of best available pocket clips, titanium mechanical pencils, pens, you know a project such as the jet powered skateboard and you know when I think about it I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I still have a lot to learn in business. I'm still a complete amateur in terms of cash flow and making mistakes and buying things I shouldn't buy. Like, you know, like, I'm, it's just like, I'm surprised how much I still need to learn. Like, every day that goes by, I'm like, I think I know less today than I knew before. But it's all good and it's just part of the learning experience. Just keep moving forward and. It, you know what? I can't keep standing here talking. I have hankies to pack. I'm going to leave you with a quote today that is from someone you almost certainly have never heard of. The reason for that is that it's from a lecturer from back when I was at university. It was something he said and it relates to what I talked about earlier about the documentation, you know, and get, getting documentation and how helpful it will be for the little touch screen for the turbine on the jet powered skateboard. My old university lecturer was talking about 
electronics and software systems and, and having documentation for them. His name was Professor Jim Heard and he said, documentation is like sex. When it's good, it's really, really, really good. And when it's bad, well, it's better than nothing.